Hi everybody, Steven Rosell here, technical specialist at Autodesk, and I'm happy to announce that we are finally out the door with Bonus Tools 2015. Once you install it, uh, the installer now works for both 2014 and 2015, so I do recommend that you, un if you're running 2014, you uninstall the old version and reinstall the new version just to avoid any conflicts. There will be differences in the tools, so you need to be running 2015 in order to get all the new features. But the installer will work with either. So once you install it, bonus tools will load, and you'll see now that we, much like the standard Maya releases, we now highlight the new features in bonus tools, which makes it a lot easier to figure out what's new. So as you scroll through the menus, you can clearly see where we've added new features um, that you might want to check out. So let's go to the help menu and I'll just go over the new features. So if you just go to bonus tools help, that will load your bonus tools documentation. Whoops, there we go. And in here, what you could see is if I go to the what's new section, it will give me a list of everything that's new. And if I scroll down below and I go to content section, you can see that I've got highlighted in red anything that's been updated or anything that is actually new. So if you click on click drag move you can see that it's been updated to support Z up and if you look below that we have a new tool called click drag rotate which uh, basically works in the same way but for rotate instead of move so I'm not going to go over the documentation I just want to point out that that is all there now I'll do a quick review of what's in the new release so the first thing to point out is the click drag move and click rotate the companion tool the click rotate is new and basically what they allow you to do, if you haven't used the uh, original tool, click drag move, which used to be called simply uh, drag move. Now you can actually just click in the viewport to interactively move a group or individual object, depending on what you have selected. Now if you activate click drag rotate, then you can rotate those around the center point. And then if you use clutch key shift, you can rotate around their individual centers and control will rotate around the last selected object. So I can switch back and forth between these two with hotkeys now. So if I use Control Shift W, I can switch over into the Move tool. Likewise, Control Shift E will switch me quickly into the Rotate tool. So you can get in and out of these tools very quickly. The hotkeys get added the first time you run the tool. We also have a new snapping tool called Snap Align Objects to Component. If you go into the options for this, you have a few options, one of which is just simply an orient option, which is on by default. So what you would do is you would grab an object and then you would go in and shift select a component and then just apply this and it will snap a line to that component. Now you can also go in and you can turn on constrain and what that will do is it will constrain the object to that particular um, target and then will free up the constraints so that it will work with other faces or components as well. And then lastly, you have the option of going in and turning on parent, in which case you'll actually parent the objects in addition to constraining and aligning the object. Now similar to that, we have a tool called replicate object on components, which actually does this with multiple objects. So now I can take this cone object and then I can shift select specific components on my target object and then using similar options, um, I can go in and I can replicate this towards those target objects. So now I'm getting a copy of each one of these. These, is, these are each individual, so you can see that the shape is independent. Now I can also go in, if I undo that step, and I can turn on instancing, in which case each copy will be an instance of the other, allowing me to create uh, the same uh, copied shape, essentially. So I can work with any component type. So I can switch into multi-mode and I can grab a face, I can grab a vertice, I can grab an edge, and then I can use any one of those and replicate to those. I have to select the object, of course. Now I can replicate to those. Or I can go in and I can work in a random mode. So if I grab the cone, shift select the target object, I go into random, I just choose how many copies that I want. I say replicate and it will create that many random copies. And I can choose whether I want to attach to vertices, faces, and or edges. Every time I replicate now, I'm going to get a new random set. And again, this uses the instancing options as well. So if instancing is on, each one of these will share a shape. So it's a quick way of going in and populating or propagating an object across things like uh, face path, for instance. So I can come in here, grab this face path right here, go into selected mode and replicate, and you'll see I get a copy of each of those objects along that face path. So if you needed to put rivet, rivets along a pipe or something like that, this would be a very useful tool. 
We also have several very useful pivot tools called zero pivot tools, and each one of these tools works in a slightly different way. If you take something like the cone, for example, the cone has its pivot in the center by default. So if I type in 000 for translate, the center will always go to the world origin. So what I can do is I can say that I want to move the, the pivot to the base and then zero is transformed. Now that will maintain the offset, put the pivot to the base, and when I hit zero, 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 the base will go to the center. Likewise, if I were to have an object off in space and I were to manually move its pivot and then come in here and actually freeze my transforms, what that's gonna mean is this is now going to be my world origin. So if I move the object over here and then I come in and I type in zero, 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 you can see that that object always go, goes back to that spot. So what I can choose is to maintain or keep the pivot offset, but zero out the local values. That will transfer the world space offset to the actual object rather than the pivot offset. Now when I go in and I type in 000, then the pivot will snap exactly to 000. Likewise, I have a center pivot, and that will center the ob object's pivot and then zero that out as well. So it's a very useful tool for placement of objects as well as for things like bullet physics, which require a centered pivot. Um, and also, if you wanted to line objects to one another, it's very useful. Under the display section, we have several useful tools. So I'll just create a couple of objects here, and let's just create a cube and a sphere for simplicity. One thing I can do is turn on the new poly shell count HUD, and that will actually count the number of shells in a given object. If I shift select objects, it will count the shells within those objects. If I were to go in and do something like this, where I actually detach this object, breaking it into two pieces, now when I select the object, it will de detect that there are two shells within that object. If I were to go in and actually turn on the, the uh, border edge display, you'll clearly see that there is a border edge within that. Now if I add this object, once again, it'll calculate the combined number of shells. Another useful display option, we'll turn that off, is the display control HUD. That will bring up a simple series of heads-up displays, and these heads-up displays will give you visual information about the scene. So it gives you simple controls, for instance, for changing things like the background color, where I can toggle that. I can change the axis location. I can go in and I can uh, set my uh, grid numbers to be on. And then likewise, let's actually go in and change the grid size with a simple slider. So I have an interactive slider that allows me to control the grid size. Let's actually get the color back to a little darker, a lighter value. You can also control things like the near clipping plane. So if I go in and, or rather the far clipping plane is more visual, I can adjust, interactively adjust the clipping plane. And then if I were to uh, take a look over here, I have control one as a hotkey. So if you're not using that already, it'll create the hotkey and it will allow you to toggle these on and off essentially. So I have view display, I have anim display, which contains things like IK handles, joint labels, local access, selection handles and then I can toggle those on and off. I have poly display. Poly display is exactly what it says. It basically allows you to control things like your face center display, your vertex normal display. It gives you sliders over the vertex normals. It allows you to control your geo border display. And then there's a simple reset as well if you wanna turn all this off. So let's just close that. Um, I'll show a couple of other things that have been added. So under modeling, there's a new tool called Bevel Around Faces. And what this allows you to do is grab a series of faces. Let's say I grab something like uh, kind of this cross pattern here on this object and go into the tool and I can either work in command or interactive mode. If I choose command mode, then it will just simply apply a bevel around the perimeter of all of those faces. Now, if I were to repeat that on another area, let's say right here, and I apply this in interactive mode, then it will actually bring up the manipulator, a virtual manipulator that allows me to control the offset and then gives me marking menus to control the segments. This is based on the modeling toolkit bevel, but the difference here again is that it's beveling around the face centers as opposed to all of the interior edges as well, which is what happens by default. 
Under UV editing, we have an auto unwrap UVs tool, which has been updated to include the new unfold 3D algorithm. So if I bring this over here, I'll use the default settings here and I'll simply enter the tool that will give me heads up displays that then allow me to define my edge borders. So you simply click to select your edge borders, add them, continue, and it will unfold those shells using Unfold 3D. It keeps a history of everything you've done. So I can say go back for instance, and then I can go in and add another edge loop here and then rerun that and it will re-unfold based on that algorithm. There will be other uh, posts that show a lot more detail about how this works, but that should give you a good starting point. Under rendering, we have a really handy tool that allows you to find the textures for any object in your scene. For instance, if I were to go in and grab this crate, you can see that it's missing textures. So rather than going into the hypershade and trying to find the textures manually, I can just simply select the object and then say search project for missing textures, and it will look for any textures that are associated with that object. Grab another object, say search project for missing textures, and again, it will find all the textures for that object. If I want to work at the shader level, I can as well. So if I go into the node editor, for instance, and I graph the materials on this object, what you can see here is that I've got a number of materials and textures that are missing, or rather a number of textures that are missing from the materials. So I can actually select the texture itself, again, run search for project, and it will find that particular texture. Or I can go in and I can grab the shader and it will find any missing textures that are associated with that shader. So if I run that, you can see that it will go in and it will populate or, or fill all these textures that are associated with that particular shader. So again, it works based on object, it works based on texture, and it works based on shader. Uh, so I can do one at a time. If I've got a broader scene that is missing a lot of textures, I can simply deselect everything in my scene and I can run this and it will give me a warning. If nothing is selected, it will search my entire, uh, for all of the missing textures in my entire scene. So this may take a little while depending on the size of your scene, but if I say yes, now it's gonna go through one by one, look for any missing textures based on the file nodes that it finds, and then if they're missing, it will find the associated texture within the current project. So after uh, about 30 seconds to a minute there, it found all of the missing textures in the scene. And again, it works relative to the project, but it saves you the time of having to go in and manually look for them. So it's a very handy little tool. Another new thing that's been added is something called Layout Tools, which has been out for a while, but it has now been fully integrated into Bonus Tools. And it is um, installs with Bonus Tools, will be updated with Bonus Tools, but it's also been significantly updated in this release. So now it is a general for purpose visual file browser, an icon based file browser. So you basically, under your browser settings, you point it to a project or to a uh, absolute path, and then it will find all the Maya files, whether they be MB, MA, or FBX, it will find all those files and build icons for them. So now if I just click on that icon, it will either open import reference or assembly reference that file. If you want to update the icons, you can basically go in here with the existing file, right click on the icon and just say create from current scene. That will give you a simple icon generation tool where I can go in and I can rebuild the icon to my liking. And then when I'm done, that icon gets stored near the file. There are various settings for that as well. So you can still use this as a, an, a scene assembly tool as well. So I'll set this up so that I can actually do some importing. So with a few simple settings, you can change this to either import, open reference, or assembly reference. So I have now set it to assembly reference, which basically means that I can just click drag on an object to bring that into my scene. So now when I'm bringing these objects and I'm bringing an assembly reference, it automatically adds an option for uh, moving or placing the object within the scene. So I can take all these various parts and pieces and I can quickly click drag them into my scene and start to build kind of a modular uh, type uh, setup. So I'm not gonna go into all the details here. I just wanted to point out for anybody that's used like layout tools in the past that it still has that functionality. It just can also be used as a broader, uh, simple file browser. The transform tab basically has been updated, it used to be called the placement tab. This contains anything transform related, whether it be simple scale, rotate, or move, or whether it be advanced things like copying transforms, rotate, or mirroring transforms, randomizing transforms. The snap align section 
Uh, it used to be called the assembly section, but that was a, a name that conflicted with another feature in Maya. So now it's just called Snap Align, and it contains simple things for point to point snapping, bounding box snapping, constraint snapping, and so on. So this tool has been significantly updated. I'm not going to go into all of the details here, but I will do additional blog posts on the Layout Tools resource page to go over some of the more in-depth or advanced features for Layout Tools. But that should be enough just to give you a starting point for how to use the tool. So that pretty much wraps up the overview of Bonus Tools 2015. I hope you guys find it useful and uh, report any kind of problems or issues or suggestions on the, the resource page. Thanks for your time. Take care.